Good morning, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Amanda. It has been a while since I've done a video. The kids and I, we were out of town for a while, we went to Virginia to visit my parents, and we are back. The garden looks amazing, and I have a basket full of yummy goodies. And we are going to be cooking up some stuff today in the kitchen. And I have on the menu to cook uh, blueberry zucchini muffins, zucchini chocolate chip muffins, zucchini brownies. And it's also Father's Day today, so we are going to be doing something for that. And we're going to be doing a slow cooker crock pot flank steak and asparagus with some potatoes. But first, we're going to go ahead and get to Walmart and pick up a few little things that we need. And I'll show you a video clip too before we get into cooking of everything that I collected from the garden. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go on our Walmart adventure. Okay, so we are here at Walmart doing our Walmart pickup. I placed it really late last night. That way we could get here early in the morning. I pulled out what recipes I was gonna be using, so I went ahead and placed the order. And we are here at Walmart just waiting on our pickup. I didn't get a lot of things because I still need to put together my Costco grocery list and figure out what other meals I'm gonna be making. The kids and I traveled to Virginia to visit my parents. We were gone for nine days. My husband had to stay home because he had to work still. And once he got home from work, he watered the garden for me. I greatly appreciate that he did that because, you know, when we got home, we were able to collect a lot of goodies. It was really nice that he left some things for me to pick because it was fun getting out there and finding all these wonderful hidden treasures. He definitely picked a few things for me, like nice bright red tomatoes, but it was really nice to get out and about and see what was there. It was a really long trip driving home. We left at 8.30 in the morning. We should have been home around 1.30, but traffic was really bad, so we didn't get home until about 3.38 that day. It was a really long day, but let me tell you, getting out in the garden once we got home, I got to water it and I got to pick everything too and really think about, ooh, what am I gonna make with this? I got a good collection of cucumbers and zucchinis. Could not get over how big two of the zucchinis were. They were huge. I mean, we were gone for nine days and came back and I just could not believe my eyes on how big they were. I'm definitely going to have to get out here and really twist tie back some of these tomatoes. Everything's getting pretty wild for how big the tomatoes are. So the branches are starting to really fall over. So I'm going to have to come through and weed the garden. And I'm also going to have to remove some of the branches from the tomatoes because some of the leaves have really wilted over. You know, when you water your garden, you definitely want to have a pattern of when you water your garden. I really like to water my garden in the morning before it gets too hot. And you start to monitor, you know, how much you should water every day. Some people water every other day. I like to water every day. And I like to just monitor, you know, how much I'm watering. You'll, you will learn your pattern of how much you should water. You will definitely learn your own garden and how it goes. And there's nothing to be scared about when you start a garden. You start somewhere, you know, you could start small and start with something simple and easy in a container and really learn the pattern of how to water it and what you need to do to help make each plant thrive and what works best for it. And you also start to learn your location too of, you know, the sun of where you should plant things. But definitely my garden was not in its normal routine of being watered in the morning. Um, but that's okay. I'm going to get it to bounce back to where it was before we left. But I'm really happy with everything that we were able to collect. It is just, it's amazing. I just really love it. It is a coffee kind of morning. I definitely have not stopped since I got home from our trip, unloading the car, watering the garden, collecting everything from the garden that I saw that was ready to be picked and putting my Walmart order together late last night, printing out, you know, my recipes that I wanted to use um, today for Father's Day and also things, you know, my recipes for zucchinis because Goodness, I have quite a bit of zucchinis to use. I have quite a bit of a lot of every other thing too that I picked. I like splitting up my days of what I'm going to be cooking because my kitchen is only so big. So I like to, you know, make sure that I don't overwhelm myself 
or make my kitchen so messy and cluttered. I want to make it to where it's going to be simple and easy for me and also manageable. So definitely splitting up, you know, between making stuff with zucchini and maybe one day doing the canning. And I also want to make some salsa. So I definitely like to make sure that I am splitting up my days of what I'm going to be cooking in the kitchen. I also like to pick my tomatoes when it gets a nice kiss of pink color to it. That way I can bring it in the house. It can slowly turn to a nice red color on my kitchen counter. I don't have to feel so overwhelmed of, you know, oh, I picked it. It's nice and red and oh, I have to can it right away. By doing that, I can slow down my process of canning and getting things preserved. But it's nice too because then that way animals don't flock to that bright red color and eat it. So that's definitely helping me to actually have more stuff to use by saving it and bringing it in the house that way. Okay, so we have quite a bit of stuff to get done today. So we're going to go ahead and get the flank steak into the crock pot. So this is about the size that I am using. And I'm using my Ninja Foodie Possible Cooker Pro. And um... I'm not going to turn it on yet until I get everything in it. So I'm going to go ahead and start by getting the flank steak in there. And I'm using a size that's accommodating to my family size. Let me go ahead and wash my hands. We need one cup of beef broth and I'm using gluten free. I'm just going to go ahead and place that in there as well. We need half a cup of gluten-free soy sauce. You can use regular soy sauce if you're not gluten-free. I'm gluten-free, so I am making this a gluten-free uh, meal that I can eat. So the beef broth was gluten-free, and the soy sauce is gluten-free. So I'm using half a cup. Go ahead and put that in there as well. We need fourth cup of honey, and I like to spray my measuring cups or spoons, you know, when I use honey. That way, then it just glides right out, it makes it a lot easier. Okay, so a fourth cup of honey. We need four cloves of garlic. So we're gonna just go ahead and um, you can either mince them or slice them. I like to slice mine, especially for something like this in the crock pot. As you can see, we have a lot of zucchinis to use up. So definitely after this, gonna start on the zucchini brownies and the muffins. I figured doing the zucchini brownies would be um, something different and fun for Father's Day. So all right, let me go ahead and slice these up real fast. Whoops. Ah! <laughs> all right, here are my garlic cloves all sliced up. Okay, so I need one teaspoon of ginger. You can use fresh. I'm just using a uh, ginger, ground ginger for this. Now we need some salt and pepper just for taste. So you can add, you know, how much you would like for it. My kids aren't that big of a pepper fan, so I don't add a lot of pepper. I just add a little bit of it. Okay, so now that we got all that in there, I'm gonna go get something so I can kind of stir it around. And I want something to use um, that has silicone on it because it has a non-stick coating in there and you don't wanna scratch it up. So I'm using silicone tongs. And let me show you how it looks too. Okay, so here's how it looks, and I'm just going to kind of give it a little stir, and then just flip it over to kind of get the coating, and also I want the garlic um, 
that I sliced up, I want that in the liquid. So that way it gets all that good flavor. And I mix it in the honey a little bit too because that way it just doesn't clump up in one area with the honey. You can mix this in a bowl beforehand to really get it a good mix. Uh, but I wanted to mix it in this so that way I don't have a lot to clean up afterwards because I am going to be doing other things today. Uh, like making the zucchini muffins and things like that. So I want it to have a little less to clean up in the kitchen towards the end. All right, so we can go ahead and put the lid on. And so I'm gonna hit power and we're gonna leave it on slow cook and I'm gonna put it on low. And we're gonna cook it for eight hours because I want it to be nice and tender, full of flavor. All right, so once we have it on eight hours, we're gonna hit start. And I really love my Ninja Foodie Possible Cooker Pro. It is amazing, it cooks really well. I love how versatile it is in my kitchen. It makes things really easy. All right, so let's go ahead and get on to the next thing. Okay, so I have some potatoes I need to use up. So I am just gonna make a potato dish where I cut russet potatoes up, some onions and some garlic, and throw in some herbs, and then I bake it in the oven. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and get that out of the way. So I'm using six nice, decent sized russet potatoes, and this will be good too because I'll have leftovers throughout the week as well. That's Connor, and that's Daddy, and that's you, and that's our sister. I love it. I love it, baby. He's going to love it too. The kids are working on some things for Father's Day right now. Wait, where's me? Look at me. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these up into bite sizes. Oh, yeah, I got me. I love it. And then that way, cutting them up into bite sizes, they all cook at the same time, cook evenly at the same time. Lately, when I'm putting together my Costco list, I always try to rotate between my russet potatoes one month and then do like the golden Yukon potato the next. That way I kind of switch up my meals and what types of potatoes I'm using in the house. Okay, so I'm only going to use four potatoes because they're actually fairly large potatoes and I'm not going to have enough room to get all six of them in. I probably could get all six of them in there, but it'd be a really tight squeeze and not easy to stir it when I need to stir it throughout while it's cooking in the oven. So I am using one medium yellow sized onion. And I am going to slice these up into tiny little sizes. I don't want like big chunks. Okay, so here are my size onions that I chopped up. And I'm just going to go ahead and place this on top of the potatoes. Okay, now I'm going to add some garlic in on it. I have six cloves of garlic that I'm adding into it. And I'm not going to slice them up. I'm just going to take the outer paper off it and just add it into it. I love making this potato dish. Even for breakfast, it's perfect. It's so tasty with the sunny side up egg and that runny yolky stuff just going in with the potatoes. It's so good. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and add a third cup of olive oil to it. And you can spray the bottom of your uh, baking dish before if you would like. I should have. I was getting really low, though, on some baking spray because I've not done any big grocery shopping yet since we just got back in town. I should have added it to my Walmart pickup, but I totally forgot. It'll be okay. We will figure it out. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and add a third cup of my olive oil to the baking dish with the potatoes. Okay, so now we need one tablespoon of garlic um, powder. Even though I know we added garlic cloves to it, it just gives a little more flavor. And I'm just gonna add it to it, spr and sprinkle it, but we are gonna go ahead and toss it after we get all the herbs into it. We need one tablespoon, I'm sorry, one teaspoon um, and I did one teaspoon of the garlic powder. One teaspoon of parsley. Just sprinkle that on top. 
We're going to use one teaspoon of the basil from our garden this year. I am hoping to fill this entire jar up from the basil from around the garden. We have quite a bit still growing out there. So one teaspoon of the basil. And we're also going to use some oregano from our garden as well. And again, I hope to fill this one up too with all oregano. And we're going to use one teaspoon of that as well. Nothing like homegrown herbs. It smells so good. And we're going to go ahead and put that on top. And then we're going to go ahead and give this a toss. And also, I'm going to go ahead and set the oven to 400 degrees and let it preheat. And so I'm going to go ahead and toss the potatoes with the herbs in it and the olive oil. And you just want to get it nicely coated with the olive oil. Hi! My youngest is down on the floor playing with cards right now. It's a pajama kind of morning right now. Um, we traveled yesterday um, back home from Virginia and we left at 8.30 in the morning. Hi! And we were supposed to get home around like 1.30, but uh, traffic was really bad. And we didn't get home. Hi! It was like 3.38, so hang on. Hi! So yeah, we're still in our pajamas. We've lost a sock. We'll find it eventually. Hi, huh, buddy. It's been one of those mornings, just snuggles and playing with toys. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add some salt as well before I forget. And we're going to use about um, one teaspoon as well for this. And, um, and I'm going to go ahead and toss all this together. And then we're going to go ahead and add in um, three tablespoons of butter. And we're just going to cut those into individual, like one tablespoon sizes for the butter. And then that way I can place it on top evenly so it will melt nicely on top of it. All right, so I got my butter cut into tablespoons. So three tablespoons of butter and I'm going to place it on top. It's all nicely tossed and I'm going to go ahead and get it in the oven and I'm going to check it at the 30 minute mark and toss it around. So let's go ahead and get it in the oven. Mm, it smells good. I love the fresh herbs from the garden. All right, so I'm going to set the timer for 30 minutes. Then we will stir and set the timer for another 30 minutes, making a whole hour for them to cook. Okay, and it's, the oven is set for 400. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started on the next thing. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start making the zucchini brownies. I figured let's go ahead and get those going because it is Father's Day. Uh, my husband is working, so we were trying to get some stuff done before he gets home. But look how gorgeous these zucchinis are from our garden. We were gone for, I think about maybe nine days. And these things just really took off. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and use some of this stuff up. We have one, two, three, four, five, six zucchinis that I need to do something with. Um, I don't have to use them up right away all today so I can save some for like maybe grilling um, and doing something like that with them. But I would like to make some stuff so that way I can also freeze. So that's why we're gonna also do the blueberry zucchini muffins and the chocolate chip zucchini muffins. So let's go ahead and get the brownie ones going first. Okay, so we need a half cup of vegetable oil. Now we need one and a half cups of sugar. One tablespoon of vanilla. Now you're gonna to wanna to mix it until those ingredients are fully incorporated together. Using gluten-free flour, King Arthur brand measure for measure. It's one of my favorite gluten-free um, flours to use and you're going to need two cups of flour for this recipe. You're going to need a half a cup of cocoa powder, one and a half teaspoon of baking soda, and one teaspoon of salt. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and mix this all together. So 
So the batter will be very dry and that's okay because we are gonna be adding in three cups of zucchini that we're gonna grate. We're gonna grate up the zucchini, like finely shred it. And we're gonna add those into this mixture here and we're not gonna drain it. So that will add the liquid we need, the good moisture for this recipe. Okay, so now that that's all mixed up, we're gonna go ahead and do um, shred our zucchini. All right, so we're gonna use this fairly large one here. So beautiful. I'm gonna grate this until I get three cups of zucchini grated up. Okay, so I have three cups of finely shredded up zucchini, and I'm going to go ahead and add it in there. And because I use such a large zucchini, it had quite an amount of larger seeds. Um, so I tried to pull out as much as I could in them. Oh, here's another one. And then I decided I started to cut them out because it was a lot easier instead of having to worry about like, oh, are there, you know, seeds still throughout. So anyways, um... It looks great, and that's three cups. I did not drain as well. I'm just gonna set this aside because I'm gonna be grating more zucchinis. So that way I don't have to make a whole new cutting board dirty. And we're gonna go ahead and mix this together. And in the meantime, my potatoes 30 minute timer was up and I went ahead and stirred them and I set the timer for another 30 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and mix this together. Nope, and there's another seed. I am using a nine inch springform pan and I'm spraying it down with some pan spray. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and dump the batter right on into the pan. Using the spatula really helped get all the good stuff out of the bowl. I didn't wanna leave any of it in there because it just smelled so good. Once I had it all in the pan, I then took the spatula and spread it evenly on the top so that way it would bake nicely and evenly. The timer went up, so it's been in the hour for an oven. I pierced the potato with a knife and it was so soft. That's exactly how you want it to be. It smelled so good. Everyone's going to be really happy with it. I hope my husband will love it, which I know he will. It's going to be awesome. It's going to taste really good. The potatoes are done. It took literally an hour in the oven at 400 degrees. They are soft. You want to take a knife and, and pierce it to make sure that it's soft. So we're going to go ahead and get the zucchini brownies in the oven. And I have the oven set at 350 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the oven. All right, I'm going to set the timer for 25 minutes. And we'll check it at the 25 minute mark and we'll see if it needs to go 10 more minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and do a little cleaning up so that way it's not so much at the end. Okay, it's smelling really great in the house. The zucchini muffins are in the oven baking. The potatoes are done. The flank steak is cooking in the crock pot. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the blueberry zucchini muffins because I did get some cleaning done around the kitchen and I cleaned up my bowl. So let's go ahead and get started. I meant to say that the zucchini brownies were in the oven. Okay, so the 25 minute timer just went off and I'm gonna check to see if they are done. I can, just from jiggling it, I definitely need another 10 minutes. So I'm gonna set the timer for 10 more minutes. For the blueberry zucchini muffins, you're going to need one cup of shredded zucchini and then you're going to want to squeeze out the excess moisture with a paper towel. Okay, 10 minutes timer just went up for um, the zucchini brownies and we're going to go ahead and give it a poke test 
and see how it looks. It has been in now for a total of 35 minutes. Hey, Hang on one second, buddy. I'm gonna give it another good five minutes. The stuff came out um, wet still. So I'm gonna set the timer for five more minutes and we'll check on it then. In the meantime, this one wants some snuggles. So I'll be back in five minutes. Okay, so we need a half a cup of maple syrup. Half teaspoon of vanilla. A fourth teaspoon of almond extract. Two tablespoons of olive oil. One third cup of applesauce. And I am using unsweetened applesauce. One egg. And my five minute timer went up for the uh, zucchini brownies and I needed to set it for another five minutes because the batter was still really wet. So five more minutes. You need a fourth cup of milk. I actually would have the wrong measuring cup. So there we go. A fourth cup of milk. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and mix all this together before we add our dry ingredients. The zucchini brownies were in the oven for a total of 45 minutes. I wanted the knife to come out nice and clean when I pulled it out and it was perfect. So now I'm just gonna let it cool before I remove it from the springform pan. For the blueberry zucchini muffins, I'm also making them gluten-free and you need one and a half cups of gluten-free flour. I'm again using the King Arthur measure for measure gluten-free flour. I absolutely love this flour. It really, you know, it makes things that are gluten-free taste really tasty. And it's, you know, not everyone really realizes that it's gluten-free because it tastes that good with this flour. One teaspoon of baking soda. One teaspoon of cinnamon. One fourth teaspoon of salt. Now you're gonna mix all your ingredients together until well combined. Now you're going to add one cup of frozen blueberries or fresh blueberries. I tend to have frozen blueberries on hand all the time, so that's what I am using, but it does not hurt to use either or. Now that I have made this recipe, I wish I have, would have done more blueberries. So if you like more blueberries in your blueberry muffins, then I would recommend doing two cups of blueberries. So next time I make this, I will definitely be doing two cups because I personally like a lot more blueberries in my blueberry muffins. When you get a nice bite, you get more blueberries if you do two cups. All right, so the oven needed to be preheated to 350. I did not turn the oven off after the zucchini brownies were baked, so I left that alone. I'm using silicone molds um, for instead of paper liner muffin cups. Just gonna do a quick little spray. I really love using cupcake silicone molds especially when making muffins and I'm freezing them. That way I don't have to worry about that paper liner sticking to the muffin for the kids. It's already removed. It's just easy to simply pop it out of this little mold and put it in the freezer. Now you're going to decorate the tops of the blueberry muffins with more blueberries. That way it gives it a nice little pretty pop of blueberries on top of the muffins. But again, I definitely recommend doing two cups of blueberries when you're mixing the blueberries into the batter. That way every bite you take, you get a nice bite of blueberry in it. Um, just, it's just, you know, blueberry muffins, you should, I, I personally love a lot of blueberries in my muffins for the blueberry muffins. So I definitely recommend two cups of blueberries in this recipe. Okay, so these are going to go into the preheated oven that's set for 350 degrees and we're going to bake them for 22 to 30 minutes until a knife or a toothpick comes out nice and clean. Alright, setting timer for 22 minutes and I will check it then. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and clean up a little and we'll get started on the next ones. 
Okay, so it's been 22 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and check the blueberry muffins. Ooh, those look really pretty. They are definitely done. Oh, wow, okay. Let me go ahead and pull them out and show you how beautiful these look. Let me tell you, the kids are gonna be so excited about these. Look at that. They look so beautiful and tasty. All right, so we're gonna let these cool down and then I will definitely let them have one of these. We're gonna save the zucchini brownie for tonight to have with daddy. And hopefully he likes it. <laughs> and it's a little different. I've never tried the zucchini brownie before, but it looks really tasty. I've done like black bean and um, avocado brownies that are really good. So let's hope this one turns out awesome. Okay, now that the blueberry muffins are cooling down, we're going to go ahead and start on the chocolate chip zucchini muffins. And then it's just going to be really awesome to have, you know, different types of zucchini uh, muffins and brownies and that it's gluten free too. So let's go ahead and get started on the chocolate chip zucchini muffins. We need one stick of melted butter. We need one cup of brown sugar. Now we're gonna go ahead and mix this together. And also I wanna say is I left the oven on because this one as well needs to be preheated to 350, so I just left it on at 350. So we're gonna go ahead and mix these together. Okay, now we need two eggs. And you know I'm gonna save my eggshells. <laughs> I'm gonna go wash my hands real fast. You need two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Let me go get some more. I'm trying to use up some of my other stuff before it goes bad. Because I do have the other vanilla extract, the, uh, the real stuff. This is just the imitation vanilla flavoring. So I'm just trying to use some of this up. So it was two teaspoons of that. We're gonna go ahead and mix this together. And then now we need two cups of zucchini uh, shredded and uh, we are not going to drain the juice from it. So we're just gonna get two cups of zucchini grated. The seeds were really big in the zucchini that I was using. So I actually cut the cores out and my daughter then took the seeds from the core and we are letting them dry out and then we're going to put them in the fridge and we're going to use those for next season for growing zucchinis we will see how this turns out and if it doesn't work out then i definitely will buy zucchini start it from the local nursery as well two cups of shredded grated zucchini All right, now we're gonna go ahead and mix this together. And this one, you did not need to drain the liquid, leave the liquid in. We need two cups of gluten-free flour. So I'm still using, again, uh, measure for measure uh, King Arthur flour, the gluten-free one. So I'm using that again, and we need two cups of that. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. Half teaspoon of baking powder. A half teaspoon of salt. Two teaspoons of cinnamon. Now we're gonna go ahead and mix all this together. half a cup of chocolate chips and we're just going to go ahead and eye it out. All right, now we're going to go ahead and mix this together. Perfect. 
perfect. I love how these silicone molds, the muffins just slide right out. So I'm just gonna take these right out. So we can continue using the same muffin tray that we used for the blueberries, zucchini muffins. Mmm, the blueberry was good. <laughs> and I'm gonna use this little same silicone molds um, for the chocolate chip ones because it's all gluten free, so it'll be fine. Ooh, the kids are going to be so happy. They're going to love these. Hopefully Daddy will like them too. I'm going to do one more little spray. Even though they're silicone molds, I still like to do a little bit of spray in there. Just going to scoop them in. Now we're just going to put a little bit of chocolate chips on the top. And I will definitely be doing another tray of muffins because there's still more batter left over. Which is awesome that this is making a good amount. And then I can freeze some and have for another day. And the kids will be very happy. Oops, some of them I gave a little extra more chocolate chips than need be. Alright, so let's go ahead and get these in the oven. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get these in the oven and we're gonna bake for 20 to 22 minutes. And the oven was set for 350 degrees. And we'll set the timer for 20 minutes. And we'll check on it then and see if we need more time. In the meantime, I'm gonna get these in another tray to get going. Using the spring form for the brownies was awesome and definitely let it cool before removing it. Mm. These are really good. You guys are going to like them. Okay, so I checked at the 20 mark and it needed a little bit longer so I put it in for 22 minutes. And they are perfect now. I'm going to let the other ones cook a little bit longer because I put them in um, at a different setting than this one, you know, with time. So we're going to go ahead and set the timer for, uh, let's see, actually we need five more minutes. And then these ones should be done. Actually, we're going to set the timer for two minutes because some of them are smaller. So I definitely... Um, I out between 20 to 22 minutes depending on how big your muffins are I mean these ones are a nice looking size so these ones went for 22 minutes until the uh, knife came out nice and clean so, so the flank steaks so, I got a little one down here playing with them a cake pan and a spatula and some muffin cups. Um, but I I smell the flank steak, it smells really good. But I'm actually gonna add some Montreal steak seasoning on top because I kinda wanna pair it very well with the potatoes. And, oh, hi, yes. Oh, he's loving that right now. You wanna see what he's doing? Say hi, Connor. Hi. <laughs> Well, he's having a great time with that. Anyways, so I thought if I took the Montreal steak seasoning and just sprinkled it on top, I'm probably going to do about one teaspoon worth of it. And then that way it'll really incorporate some more of the flavors that I'm really looking for to pair well with everything else that I'm doing with it. Now, you do not have to use the Montreal steak seasoning, but I decided to go ahead and do it because, um, you know, I really wanted it to pair well with everything else. So I definitely thought that, you know what, doesn't hurt to go ahead and add it on top and into the liquid. Okay, so I made 
maybe about a good two teaspoons. And, and I sprinkled it on the meat. <laughs> I sprinkled it on the meat and also in the liquid. So that way um, it'll be really good. So we about have, we have about three and almost about four hours still left on it. So it's gonna be really nice. Let me go ahead and pull those rest of those muffins out. You having fun? You're having so much fun. <laughs> These are going to be really tasty. And then I'm going to go ahead and also make um, some vanilla ice cream. And you can watch my tutorial video on that and previous videos that I have done before with the vanilla ice cream. I thought that would go really well with the zucchini brownie because, oh, it's really chocolatey. And I thought, woo, hi, bud. Doing some vanilla ice cream would be really good with it. And then later I'll show you how I'm going to do um, asparagus. For the asparagus, you're going to want to set the oven to 400 degrees. And you're going to want to wash the asparagus and snap off the bottom parts of the asparagus so that you don't have that hard, thick part. And then you're going to want to drizzle the tops of the asparagus with some olive oil and add some salt for flavoring. And then I took three tablespoons worth of butter and I placed them on top. I cut them individually into one tablespoon each. So that way it would melt nicely over top of the asparagus. While the oven was preheating for the asparagus, I decided I would go ahead and freeze some of these zucchini muffins. I made sure that they were cool before I placed them in the bag. I know that the kids are not going to eat all of these at once. So I only did a few um, of the flavors in there. Now I will be making more of these. Um, because I have quite a bit of zucchini still to use up and then I will freeze them in larger batches for the kids to have later and these are good frozen for up to three months. I moved the rest of the muffins to a pretty cake dome so that way it'd be all festive for when my husband got home and look really pretty and so I decided to clean up the plate that I had the muffins originally on and I put the flank steak on top of it I thought it'd be nice and neat to put it all on one plate. And then I used the electric knife to cut it up into thin slices instead of shredding the meat. Let me tell you, I was really nervous cooking the flank steak in the crock pot for eight hours. I really love flank steak a lot and so does my family. And normally my husband grills it up, but I wanted a nice manly kind of meal for him for Father's Day. And I don't grill, he does. So you know, I took a risk and putting it in the crock pot for that long. I have done flank steak in the crock pot before when I did the gyros and I did not cook it for that long because I wanted to still have some pink on the center. But this time I was like, let's go ahead and just give it a try and cook it for the eight hours. Let me tell you, it was so mouthwatering. It was very tender. It was juicy. It was full flavor. It was perfect. Um, but if you do want, you know, flank steak to have some pink in it, then just keep an eye on it when cooking it in the crock pot. And I'd probably then reduce the time on it with cooking it in the crock pot. My family was really happy with how juicy and tender this meat was. Um, my kids really ate it up. So I was really happy about that. I guess next time I'll be using a bigger piece of flank steak in the crock pot. Um, and it was just, it was really nice to have this type of meal paired with the asparagus and the potatoes. Once the oven was done preheating at 400, then I placed the asparagus in there and I cooked them for 15 minutes until I got the nice, um, tenderness I wanted for each asparagus and it was really perfect. Everything paired perfectly well together. I then took the meat um, and placed the garlic slices that I had in the crock pot on top to make it look really nice and I added some juice to the bottom of the plate as well. And then I placed some of the potatoes on the side and also the asparagus as well on the plate. And it was easy then to bring that whole plate out to the dining room. And we all helped ourselves to what portion size we wanted instead of, you know, me plating individual plates at the counter. It just worked out perfect that way. And it was easier to clean up too because it was all on one big plate. Here's how it looks plated. And it just, it looked beautiful plated. Um, 
everyone was so happy with it. I definitely recommend this. It is really good. And my family loved it and my husband was really happy with it. After we had dinner, we had dessert. And let me tell you, the zucchini brownies were amazing. It was a big hit. They were super moist. I will be making these again and definitely having it with vanilla ice cream was, it was amazing. Um, but thank you for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.